excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Mally Moore. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest time zones. Uh, endings. God damn it. Endings. <laughs> <laughs> endings. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is. Uh, thank you for tuning in, everyone, to another exciting, high octane fuel ride of a podcast that is the Silver Linings Playlist. If you are new to the show, you picked a hell of an episode to tune in for the first time. Um, we are covering Crank Two, or just stylized sometimes as Crank High Voltage. Um, we we are a podcast that likes to watch movies such as Crank High Voltage and try to find. Uh, an uplifting good moment in the dark or confusing or baffling ending that we get in movies. So we're this is two of two for Mally. Of course, we had to do the sequel. I think it was pretty obvious. Duh. <laughs> um, but I'm glad we we're doing this because I've seen the first movie so many times that I, I, I was telling Nathan before we were recording uh, earlier that I've seen the first one probably twice a year, every year at least since I've seen seen it the movie it's just one of those <laughs> movies i can put on anytime but i jesus but i rarely come back to high voltage like i think this might be the third time i've ever seen it um but what a treat it was having not remembered a lot of what happened to, it's almost <laughs> like experiencing it for the first time um but yeah mally this is your pick you take over tell me about high voltage what you were Remember your first time seeing it, what it was like. You're not even going to well, introduce me, bro? Oh, yeah. We have yeah, uh, the returning Nathan, guest. Right? <laughs> Nathan, I, I mentioned him. Nathan returning. For, of course, we had oh, to bring him for true. the sequel. We had to bring him for the sequel. I'm, yeah. Thank you for sense. having me back to drop loads all over your silly oh, podcast. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you bring that up. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we'll Jesus. talk about that when we get there. But, yeah. But, oh. <laughs> tell me about your first time, Mally. Drop it load. <laughs> <laughs> all over your silly podcast. <laughs> So I saw this in theaters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, unlike the first one, which was spraying on me mm -hmm. unwillingly. <laughs> um, kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, it was an unwilling load, if you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> I chose to see this one in theaters, and yeah, I was fucking ready. And like, mm -hmm. I was like fucking white knuckling the seat in the theater the whole time, just like rocking, woo, 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 let's go. <laughs> Like yeah, it was it was a loud theater experience mm. to say the least. Very active. At, at least, well, I was. <laughs> uh huh. Everyone else was just kind of looking at me. Weirdly, <laughs> they well, really should have been paying attention to the movie. Let me ask. They paid to be there. Then, um, after having seen the first one, and Nathan, you can answer this as well. Mm -hmm. After seeing the first one and getting to see the second one, Mal, you saw it in theaters. Nathan, did you see the sequel in theaters? I didn't, and it's okay. a sad story. Um, did <laughs> did the hype live up to Why you? Why like, are all of Nathan's stories so sad? Well, it's not sad. I'm just sad that I missed it in theaters. <laughs> oh. Did, did the hype and the wait uh, from the first movie live up to your expectations, or were you... 110%. Okay. Correct. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, what Got about you, Nathan? What was the, f the first time like that you saw the... Guys, I was voltage. so fucking excited for this movie. I remember uh, my friend that I smoked with before when I watched the first movie that I mentioned in the last episode. Um, I remember when the like first announcement of Crank 2 came out and I read it to him and I was like, yeah, man, he's going to have to electrocute himself to stay alive. And he's like, that movie's not fucking real. That's not happening. And then the trailer <laughs> came out and he was still just like, that movie's not real. That's not happening. And it had that, that fucking... This dude uh, smokes too much weed, <laughs> right? man. He's just like, you're not real. But I remember... So I grew up in Panama City and okay no need to brag yeah, well maybe that's why i like trashy movies but the, say, uh, Mally, have you ever been to panama city it fucking blows yeah. um, <laughs> no i have why would i no it's, i have uh, self-respect it's, yeah. it's 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 not great no offense to any listeners no, and Nathan, you're you fine <laughs> When this movie came out, MTV was still coming out to PCB for spring break and like oh doing all kinds of like promotional tie ins and stuff. And I remember being on the beach. 
uh, drunk and seeing people with uh, <laughs> crank high voltage like t-shirts walking around because someone was just oh throwing them God. into the crowd. And awesome. I spent a full afternoon trying. one? I didn't. Oh, I spent a full man. afternoon All trying to get one. are so sad. <laughs> I was so bummed out. But when the movie finally came out, I was it was my first semester or maybe second semester at uh UWF and I was so broke that I could not go see it. <laughs> I was Aww. so sad and I had to wait for the uh for the movie to come out on DVD and when it did, my dad and I got it from I I want to say we got it at like Movie Gallery RIP. Uh and Yeah, Miss Movie Gallery. We couldn't fucking believe what we were watching. <laughs> like and I still you watched this movie with your father? I did. Awesome. <laughs> he <That's> loved adorable. <laughs> my dad loved the first one. And oh god. It's so weird because my dad when I was growing up was very much like don't swear in the house, don't, you know, you can't watch <laughs> this kind of stuff. And then like the second I turned 18, my dad was just like, "You want to watch the fucking Punisher?" Like <laughs> 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 it's um, a good dad like yeah right, let's go watch yeah. punisher here's some crack you want, like, we you want went, a porno <laughs> yeah. yeah like i remember <laughs> we're going to the strip club son come on put your when stressors I, on when i realized that my dad loved insane action movies was like this like light bulb moment in our relationship Perfect. like we, i've always been close to my dad but like i remember watching like uh, speaking of Punisher, Punisher Warzone, which is a hilariously Oof. insane movie, yeah. watching Ooh. that with him, yeah, and and him <laughs> just being like, I can't believe they did this. Like, <laughs> I can't believe they just blew up that parkour guy. But like, it's yeah. <laughs> it was a similar experience watching this movie. Although, uh, like, we were genuinely like turning to each other every thirty seconds, saying like, <laughs> Did they? Did that just happen? Did you see that? Let's rewind that. Um, and uh, I, I have a weird soft spot for this movie where I think because it's so Looney Tunes bonkers, it does not hold together as a narrative like the, the first movie does. But I, I find myself watching this one more than the first one. Uh, and, and again, I haven't seen this one in maybe six or seven years. So I was like really happy to like rewatch it for the show. <laughs> and, uh, it still has its moments where I'm like, oh boy, that I'm, I wish that wasn't in, <laughs> I wish that hadn't just happened. That yeah, hurts. this movie's a lot dicier than the last movie by it's, a it's lot more, little bit little bit <laughs> but it's so funny because the first movie it's dicey moments are all in dialogue i think mostly mm -hmm. in dialogue this one is more in your face and mm -hmm. somehow somehow the cartoonishness takes the edge off for me in a way it's mm -hmm. like it's like a south park episode or like g like playing gta or saints row like you mm -hmm. feel like oh well this is stupid so it's that it's the duke nukem effect where you're yeah. like if this was taken seriously, I would have a real hard time with it. <laughs> I mean, there's one moment, one character in this movie mm. that really <laughs> uh, over. Like, oh. I, I hear what you're saying about like that. If it's over the top, intentional. Oh, it's... you're talking about Bai Ling. Well, not Bai Ling. Um, uh, Venus another character. Bai Ling is her. Well, we'll get to her when we get to her. But yeah, yeah, yeah. A character in this movie that sole purposed. Uh, it, it is rivals, to be upsetting. <laughs> it rivals Mickey Rourke in uh, uh, Breakfast with Tiffany. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Mickey Ro oh, Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Mickey Rourke. I was, I would watch, there, I was like Mickey Rourke. Mickey I would watch Rooney. the what? fuck out of um, Mickey Rourke in Breakfast at yes, Tiffany's. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I would too. Um, but we'll we'll get there. Um, yeah, this. I was I was excited for this movie as well. I didn't sure. see it in theaters. Unfortunately, I don't think I did anyway. Um. But it comes, you know, as no surprise that, like, this movie just takes what the last movie did mm -hmm. and turns it up another level. Well, it, it ends, it, it builds off of the ending. I mean, it picks up immediately, yeah. so there's no... Immediately. They're it's like, the we have to... sense of a sequel. Like, it, it's, we keep going. They, we're... they Halloween to it, where they're mm -hmm. just like, okay, the, the last movie <laughs> just ended, so we have to have an insane murder right away because we don't have to build anything up now. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I can't recall what my initial reaction was. I'm sure it was positive because this movie is just as enjoyable as the first one. This movie but, slaps. For, yeah. <laughs> for, yes. for, for some reason though, this, but it's like, it's like a bitch slap though. <laughs> like it's a backhanded <laughs> slap. For some reason though, it just, fucks. it just never, this movie does fuck. This movie does fuck a lot. In the it mud. It does. Um, but for some mm. reason, it just didn't 
sit with me the same way the first one did. Like, no, that makes sense. I really enjoyed this rewatch because it's. I think this is only like I said, like the third time I've seen it. But mm-hmm. I yeah, just for some reason I kept going back to that first one. That first one feels like a complete movie. This mm-hmm. one, I think, Mally, you mentioned in the last episode, it feels like vignettes. Or, like, it feels like pieces yeah. of a movie that they strung together. There's a lot of right. weird little, like, cutaway gags that don't really mm-hmm. tie in. Well, or, like, yeah. hallucinations that maybe aren't hallucinations. Yeah. And, yeah, it's very and, strange. And Brian Taylor has said that, like, the first movie, they reverse engineered it from the ending. Like, we want this guy to fall, fall out of a sure. helicopter, land, and live. And so how do we get to there? And then this movie, it feels like they just had ideas for, like, set pieces and yeah, what's like, next? Yeah, how do we get to that? You know, what could we not afford to do on the first one that they'll let us do this time? <laughs> that, yeah, that pretty much. What's the craziest idea you can think of? All right, now how do we make point A to point B? How do we get there? Like that's how this feels versus mm-hmm. you know the the fluidity of the first one. But the, not to say this movie is not enjoyable. This movie is still fucking. I mean, my only complaint is how do you have a movie called High Voltage and you don't use the ACDC song, which would have fit perfectly. <laughs> in this movie well you know mike Patton was probably like don't let their music yeah. anywhere near my score yes, <laughs> probably um, most likely yeah well let's let's get into it let's talk about the details surrounding the making of crank yeah. high voltage so the year is 2009 three years after the release of the original uh the directors returning are mark ne- uh, neville dean and brian taylor the movie stars a familiar cast jason statham amy smart Clifton Collins Jr., who doesn't get enough screen time in this movie. I know, he's uh, so good. Evan Ramirez, Bai Ling, David Carradine, and Oof. Dwight Yoakam. Uh, the budget was $20 million. Uh, it managed to gross $34.6 million worldwide. Yikes. And currently sits at a 64%, 2% higher <laughs> than the original on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> um, what do we get... Real quick into the trailer, um, and then we can just start unraveling because I'm sure we I don't got a lot remember to talk the about. trailer. I don't. Re- it, I know I've s- definitely seen the trailer for this, but I don't remember it at all in the slightest. So this is gonna be fun. Is this I, the this is the trailer that has the Lincoln Park song yes, in it? I was right? gonna say this oh. is the one good good thing I'll say about this trailer is I love that Lincoln Park song. So yeah. let's. God, wait, what? All right, it's the one where he holds hear. out the thirty second scream. Yes. <laughs> It's a, it's, which is kind of an, uh, an impressive achievement, honestly. Oh, dude, Chester Bennington's yeah. a hell of a vocalist. Yeah, yeah. R.I.P. As we R.I.P. said, Hybrid Theory is a perfect album. I'll say it. Yes, and Meteora is pretty close too. Mm-hmm. Meteora is pretty good. It's still not hot. Why did they just the shovel? That was my first note. Let's just peel him off the sidewalk. I love how excited he is. Keep your body electrically charged to keep it pumping. If you can get hold of your heart, I'm reasonably sure I can put it back in. <laughs> reasonably sure. <laughs> reasonably sure. Just just man. Nice. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Just play the same scream three times. I'm so confused. Where have you been? I thought you were dead. Ah, oh, that wasn't right, was it? Ah. Uh, hola, chip. Did I duck? Yeah. You guys know that's Rufio? Oh, is it? What? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. The dude who cuts his nipples off. <laughs> You're gonna tell me exactly who's got more heart. I'm running on it, TikTok. Find someone to rub against. It causes static electricity. He <laughs> 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 treated me like this hot little, little whore. Too much information. <laughs> There's the red shirt guy, too, with the panties. <laughs> yeah, with yep. the panties. What you need in pristine working condition. So this is how it is. <laughs> I give in. See, this is where the trailer gets good to me. Yeah. <laughs> is responsible for the explosion of mayhem, murder, and lewd behavior that has swept Los Angeles. Dude, that newscaster, though. Holy shit. Fish Holman. from Breaking Bad. Oh, have taken something of value to me. And Q from Star Trek. And to get it back. That scream is impressive, though. For it's how crazy. long he holds it. Crank 2. 
those things are designed for strenuous activity. Tell me about it. See that the the second half of that trailer is yeah, it's, it's, I'll yeah. give you that. Yeah, it's everything. It's, it's great. So many dissolves though. <laughs> yeah. Trailer. Um. All right. So where do we want to start? Because boy, um, lot lot happening in this movie. <laughs> um, okay. So I'm just gonna be up front. I took one note for this movie. Ooh, let's hear it. <laughs> and that note is just. Thank God this movie exists. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that is a good note. You know and something. I left, and then after that, I set my phone down. I was like, "All right, I'm in." <laughs> well, why don't we talk about the biggest change from the last movie to this movie? Okay, and that comes in the form of a character by Lane. <laughs> oh, Ooh. Jesus! Um, so that's where you want to start let's start why not man we're picking up from the last podcast and we're just taking mm-hmm. the baton and running so why oh not? actually one thing i forgot to mention in the first episode mm-hmm. how great is the name chev chelios oh oh it's absolutely all time it's a great yeah. fucking name it's a great name it's up, it's there. up there yeah it's up there <laughs> it, you would think it's like like a nickname for him like chev yeah. is short for something but yeah i think in this movie you see like a medical chart and it just says chev, chev. chelios <laughs> like all right Wait, I thought his full name was Chevy. I'm pretty sure on that medical chart, it just—I mean, maybe that's just what I think. Orlando I just like... called him that, like out of like oh, familiarity. Oh, okay, mm, yeah, even better. Yeah, yeah. but I but yeah, by to... Ling. So <laughs> Jesus. again, I listen. You know, we listen to that uh, that "How did this get made?" with Brian Taylor on mm-hmm. it. He is just a plethora of information. Apparently, they had lines for by Ling. and then when she got there and was you know going through their tanks, she would just completely change it to what she wanted to say so essentially all her lines are for the most part improvised in this movie that actually makes a lot of sense and like I've... that thing like you're my shiny lunchbox mm-hmm, mm-hmm. my kevin costner <laughs> yeah um yeah i love too that they choose to subtitle her subtitle even though she's her. speaking english <laughs> because it's unintelligible and the thing like biling is such a she's had such a strange career yes yeah, uh, I'm what, trying, what, what else? She's this. The I crow, in Southland Tales. The crow. The crow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Samurai Cop only... Two. I'm pretty sure she's won an Oscar. Oh, of course. <laughs> Wait, Bai Ling? No, she has. She's won some prestigious award for a movie she did called Dumplings, um, like Best Actress that, and stuff. That's Takashi Miike, what? right? Um, maybe it was like, oh yeah, Asian Film Critics Association. Was, yeah. Excuse me. Um. But yeah, like she's Sam for Sam Gang Two. Sam Gang Two. Where's the? Let me see. Sorry, looking it up now. Oh man, I didn't even see Sam Gang One. Shit, <laughs> you'll be confused <laughs> if you don't see Sam Gang One. Oh no. Oh um, great, she was in Wild Wild West. Oh yeah. Yep, oh yep. that's. But the thing right. is, like, she, it, it's like she's doing. She's making herself into a caricature in this mm-hmm, film because, mm-hmm. like, we've heard her speak clearly. Yeah. It's just I, such a weird choice. I, I love it, though. Like, this character is, like, it's a mess in terms of race relations. She's not holding anything back. No. She she no. knows what movie she's in, and she is going for it. And she's giving a Nicolas Cage performance. Yes. And I think it stands to reason that yeah. she's she's more memorable than the villains of the movie. <laughs> like, yeah. More well, so than El Haran and... Well, because El Huron is in like one and a half scenes. Not enough. Right, right. He doesn't appear until like almost an over an hour into the movie, right? And it's so lazy Which in because this movie's what an hour twenty. Yeah, she's in, right. Shark- yeah. she's in Sharknado Five, by the way. Of course, um, <laughs> there's five of those movies. Yeah. Oh yes, those things. There's are- oh, a- no, they're huge. There's I'm trying a- to see if there's, there's anything else I, rem- I remember though. El Huron's uh, introduction is so lazy because he literally it comes out of no it's so reverse engineered where like Statham says like Chev is like there's one guy I never could catch on account of I never found him and then he just like (laughs) talks about this guy that we never saw in the first movie it's a really funny line that's I think purposefully lazy but not lazy on the level of like somehow Palpatine returned yeah it it has that same energy god one of the worst lines of dialogue in, you can see Oscar oh. Isaac is embarrassed of it. I, well, there's the meme of him like saying it, and then the next shot is him just with his, his eyes, eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But I do, I do like Elrond's introduction though, like of making that guy cut off his nipples and the and happy little dancing. dance he does. It's so good. If only see that needs to come so much earlier in the movie. It's 
he's not well, a villain. No, I think that's the, one of the problems I have with this movie is that like Ricky Verona was a great villain because he was front and mm-hmm. center. It was Chev versus Ricky. In this movie, it's Chev versus Johnny Varga versus El Haran versus <laughs> it's Chev versus everybody. Yeah, I mean, even Carlito in the first movie gets that great introduction in the swimming pool mm-hmm. where he he has that whole scene where he's just like Chev, you're still alive. <laughs> Well, he and he also has terrible bodyguards too, because Chev manages right. to get into the pool. Just gets into the fucking pool. <laughs> oh, uh, Byling was also in uh, Star Wars Episode Three, just so you know. Oh. She was what now? Okay. <laughs> I just did a spit take. I, I can t- I can hear it. Uh, <laughs> Senator Bono As Bremen, what? Uncredited. Um, but she Jar Jar oh. stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot she's in Lords of Dogtown. Uh, anyway, but. Yeah, by Ling, I think as, is as punky photographer. Yeah, I, I just think she, I wish she was in this movie more. Like she goes away for a, a long time, but I think she's in this movie the you exact, think so? exact right I think, amount. I think one more scene with her, and I would have lost my mind. Although I yeah. will say the scenes, like the scenes where she is like in act, like in action sequences. Mm-hmm. Where she is completely useless, like her character is useless, she mm-hmm. plays those so well. Mm-hmm. Like when she yeah. jumps out, like I think Brian Taylor actually said that on How Did This Get Made. He was like, he's like, she jumps out and she points her guns in a way where we knew there was no way she was connecting with anything. Yes, so yes. we did that cutaway <laughs> shot of the guard, cutaway <laughs> shot of the guard. <laughs> well, she she steals the show, like right mm-hmm. out from under statham like as soon as she's appears it no one cares about statham anymore right I, I mean as problematic as her lines are it's fucking <laughs> amazing like now, honestly byling plays a villain in this movie and i'm gonna explain why because <laughs> anyone that punches amy smart is a yeah. bad guy in my opinion yeah. sure i got i immediately hated her character the moment she laid hands on well, I, I, I love like, fucking that bitch. scene just because of like chev trying to explain what's going on and mm-hmm. not being clear yeah and amy smart i mean th- they say i think three months he's been dead right yeah yeah mm-hmm. for her i don't know what she did as a career in the first movie but to go to stripping and being randy's new new uh girl oh yeah Corey and, haim Corey haim yeah. who is awesome in which this, movie. this had like when did he pass away like he this how was much, his like, final acting role i think i think this okay, was also was like, david carradine's to, last movie yeah david carradine's last movie holy shit yeah it's like yeah both of them had to have been near the end there yeah. yeah but i mean randy's mullet is one for the fucking ages oh dude, dude. Yeah. i'd put it up there i'd put it up there you know there's i'd say <laughs> there's ah uh, man it's top uh, tier for sure yeah like it's no like Top tier mullet, I gotta put. I mean, it's Shawn Michaels in his heyday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe Exotic, Joe Dirt, <laughs> Joe Dirt. Uh, no, see, no, it's it's a uh, Joe Exotic it, trying too hard for me mm-hmm. personally. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, do you know who I put second to Michaels? Mm-hmm. Uh, Didn't Billy Ray Cyrus have one for a good while? Billy yeah. Ray Cyrus, he's up there. He's up there. I'd maybe put him like number three, honestly. Mm-hmm. Number two would be Jason Baldwin, okay. who was one of the West Memphis Three. Sure, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. mullet he had in his mugshot. Sure, it's it's neck and neck with Sean Michaels. Oh, how about uh, Swayze and Roadhouse? Ooh, Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Man, this is know, our new sideshow ranking mullets. <laughs> oh my god, we could. Oh my god, we could do. At this ep- this episode could be hours long. Um, um, Swayze's is good. Yeah, it's good. I do I do like how they manage to somehow keep this movie within the same realm of like the last movie. He's poison mm-hmm. and he's of got realism. It. Well, no, I was gonna say oh. I like that. Okay, he's poison, so he's got to keep his adrenaline going. Yeah, in what's this the movie, next gimmick? Yeah, then this movie. Okay, his heart is dying, so he's got to keep it charged. His fucking like, strawberry tart. His strawberry tart. <laughs> I, I like how he has to explain that. Yeah. I mean, they, they apparently, you know, they wrote the last movie for like a Nick Cage type, and now that they mm-hmm. knew Statham was their guy, they let him improvise a lot more on this movie, like with mm-hmm. his Cockney oh, slang great. and everything. So, and they like sp- specifically wrote him as a Brit too, like this yeah. time around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I do say like this movie, he's British, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, this movie does feel like it's slower paced than the last movie. Like, yeah, this I just. Well, I mean, anything feels slower yeah. pace compared like, to Crank even, One. Like when he escapes out of this 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 organ farming place, like it's kind of slow. Like it's mm-hmm. there's shootouts, 
and everything, but like when he's just he shoves going, a gun up a guy's ass. <laughs> oh, t- oh my god! My my note that's, on that. You know, that's what I really like about Crank Two. It mm-hmm. uh, you know, it takes its time. It, it lets you breathe a little bit. Sure. <laughs> my and then he shoves a shotgun up someone's ass. My my note is just think of all the people that audition for the role of guy who lets a tar covered shotgun get shoved up his ass <laughs> like someone so imagine making the casting call for that wait also <laughs> how like lubricating is tall can't be any really right. like i feel like it's not that no helpful. the little the little one-liner of you can keep that is really good yeah, though. That's a great line. <laughs> yeah great line um yeah i mean i it does somehow like we talked about it feels Le- uh, more disjointed than the last movie but i think that's what hurts the pacing is like yeah. you have sequences like in the middle of an action scene you then have the cutaway of him on a talk show that may or may not have actually happened it's, a, whole it's such a weird scene it, i mean yeah, it, very odd i feel like that's odd. the their version of the elevator conversation from the last right. movie like them trying yeah. to humanize chelios with jerry halliwell from the spice girls <laughs> Yeah, well, and that that talk show that's... host looks he, he he looks like a discount Ben Mendelsohn. Yes, I yeah. oh, no, I thought he yeah. was I thought he was like a discount um, Steve Coogan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That that talk show scene could easily be cut and would just make the mm-hmm. movie that much better. I mean, we cut right from that to the them dragging him along in the right. the boat so we could easily get rid of that scene there's a lot of stuff like that but there's also a little a lot of weird little moments that i love like when the dude uh, oh the part that made me cringe i think the most when the guy gets his elbow yes. sliced yeah there's a lot Ooh. of gory stuff in this movie that like i had to turn away like the elbow slicing the bit, nipple slicing bit. The close up on Johnny Vong when he goes, This is new and exciting. Yes. <laughs> it was really yeah. good. Well that's that's Jesus. another thing too, is Johnny Vong is not nearly as interesting of a villain as like Ricky no. was in the last movie, you know? It's like he's you, so you focus on a henchman for nuts. so long. Well he's a he's a, he's a henchman that I can feel him trying too hard to be crazy and ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Whereas Ricky Verona gave it like it, it felt natural to that character. Mm-hmm um but like so i guess we gotta ask too what's in the box right like i mean hey we get more we do technically get more verona in this movie we do and we will get there (laughs) holy shit (laughs) holy shit but what what, uh if you had to speculate what's what do you guys think's in that in that cooler oh marcellus wallace's soul yeah (laughs) oh yeah duh of course i think it's the suitcase from Reservoir Dogs <laughs> in that cooler. <laughs> is it there? Um, yeah, I like I, the best part that comes of that character is the Godzilla fight, right? Because the Godzilla fight is yeah, fuck, it's the fucking amazing. Best, it's the best scene every... in the movie. There's a. Oh, I'm wearing a Godzilla so T-shirt right now in honor of that scene. <laughs> the uh, the fucking You're bragging a lot on this episode. You know, it's that? not a big deal. I have T-shirts, you guys. Um. There was uh, I, something I never caught before, but you can see the seam in the back of the Statham head and the mm-hmm. stuntman's like hair just like pouring out <laughs> yep. of it. It's so yep. fucking funny. Well, I love that they felt the need to make little models of the two guys. <laughs> Lloyd Kaufman the and the other yes. guy. Yes. Just <laughs> oh, that's another thing, too. The cameos in this movie are... Did you guys insane. catch Maynard James Keenan and I Danny did. Loner? <laughs> I did. Yep. I, yep. For the life of me during that scene, I kept thinking, these guys look so familiar. Who the fuck are they? And then I... Looked it up and my mind fucking exploded because I <laughs> yeah. never knew that. And they're so fucking funny in that scene yeah. too, man. Like it, Maynard's like really nerdy and like super endearing. Like I don't know, it's just that that is a really funny scene that his that also could too, be cut, but it's really good. His delivery too of like I wanted a cat anyway and dogs suck. And like when he keeps so zapping good. the dog and then. Not to, not to be outdone, but Jason Statham gives some great physical comedy in that scene, too, where he almost mm-hmm. does, like, a little jig when he's getting uh, zapped. <laughs> and he, like, bites at him. He's like, <laughs> oh, it's so good. Like, that little stuff I don't mind because, like, that and the payoffs, the payoffs from mm-hmm. the last movie, like, all the jokes they set up. My oh, favorite, my God. My favorite being the phone call. The answering machine. It's yeah. so oh, fucking good. Oh, the phone call's so good. Because that's, that's exactly what you would hear. It's just... It's like, didn't you get my message? <laughs> and it, it perfectly undoes, like, the most heartfelt scene in the first mm-hmm. movie. Or one of the most yep. heartfelt scenes in the first movie. It's so... 
Yeah, no, that those are so those are amazing. some great gags. That and of course Glenn Howerton's payoff with Oh fucking one of the most insane scenes I've ever seen in a movie. I'm gonna <laughs> floss my teeth with pubes. Oh, oh. Well like I love how line. I love how they they could have just done a quick cutaway of the bullet coming through the window, mm-hmm. but they give him a whole scene yeah. about how Chev Chelios ruined his life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, just it, not to, men- to mention that it's just doubling up on the ricocheting bullet joke of the mm-hmm. first movie with the bird. Yeah. Right? They, they keep doing it. And then, you know, Brian Taylor's talking about, like, there's a lot of stuff they wanted to do in the first movie that they just mm-hmm. couldn't figure out how to do in the second one. The biggest one being the, the implants the, the implants that melt, on the, which we cut back to three separate times of watching yeah. this woman's... I forgot about that scene until I was so watching I. it, like, and... I gasped. Yeah. I was just, I was shocked. <laughs> well, it's Mally, a terrible effect, but it's so funny. You'll appreciate this too. Do you know who they got on this movie to do the the special effects for? The reason the, why they were able to do stuff like that? Um, I'm guessing a special effects person. Yes, but mm-hmm. g- the, the movie that he's most known for is Passion of the Christ. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah. my yes. God. Because he's apparently like a they gore got, expert. They got Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Caviezel. Na- Nathan Malley doesn't know how movies work. <laughs> yeah. Um, man, there were actors in this. There were actors in both movies. Man, it's insane. it's wild. Um, God, first I found out Jason Statham's British. Now Mel Gibson's doing the special <laughs> effects. This movie's fucking got everything. And you know, not to be out- I Ling won an Oscar for it or something. <laughs> not to be outdone from the last movie too, where we like the little things we talked about, like adding mm-hmm. up to like a great movie. I love that the strip club on the front has a sign that says "Strip, please." <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty great. Um, I like that. Uh, I like that Eve is wearing his tracksuit. From the first yes. movie yeah. when she comes that out for nice her touch. routine. That was a nice touch. Um, poor Amy Smart. Gosh, dude, I was about to say poor <laughs> Amy Smart for having to spend half of this movie topless. Well, like, dude, that, that ahead, sex Nathan. scene, she's like doing she she's all for it though. She's ha- she's she's so fucking funny in this yeah. movie. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, she signed on to the movie. So. Yeah. The wide the wide <laughs> shot where she's doing like snow angels in the mud during the sex scene yeah. is so fucking funny. <laughs> I mean that's that's sex. Do I mean it tops the Chinatown? Yeah, scene. they were just like, we, well, you know, that was one of their things. Yeah, like, does the Amish snowplow? To- <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> on their list of to dos for this movie, it was like top Chinatown sequence. So mm-hmm. it lied with that. Then we played this little mini game on the last episode of what bit part would you like to play mm-hmm. in the movie? Mine has got to be the guy that tosses him the cowboy hat. It's gotta be. That's the part I would love to, because that's the craziest part of the sex scene. That's me. so funny. Um, um, I think mine would be Chester Bennington's little cameo. What just, the fuck, just, man? Yeah. <laughs> just what the fuck, bro? I I'm hoping that that's supposed to be the same character as the. I first hope movie. so too. But if I mean, not, it has to be right. Well, I mean, he looks so much different. Like he's dyed his hair too, and you know, it, it's. I mean, it it it's still Chester Bennington. Yes, it's still Chester Bennington, but it just it just looks different than the than the last actor. But then again, I hope it's supposed to be the same character because it's been three months, bro. Who yeah, knows what could happen? True. I just I, love the reoccurring little characters in this movie, which we talked about right. in the last episode. But the the red shirt guy that catches the paintings mm-hmm. in the red shirt guy. <laughs> I oh. I would want to play Lloyd Kaufman's part because yeah, he gets be the oh, yeah, during yeah, the yeah, Godzilla yeah, yeah. scene it cuts to him and he's like I guess we should call the police <laughs> like, it's so <laughs> it's so nonchalant what about it's you, so Mallory? funny who would you like to what bit part I said Chester Bennington oh that's right role. that's right Chester Bennington yeah and it's God pay attention well, uh, what time like, are you in if it's not <laughs> if it's not the guy that throws a cowboy hat I think a, a good runner up would be the gardener. <laughs> That's still gardening during this big gang shootout. So the funny! Oh yeah. <laughs> That's speaking great. of uh, speaking of bringing it's underground LA man, he's seen it all. Yeah, he's he's not worried about it. This happens all the time. Um, bringing characters from the first movie back. The first time we see Doc Miles, he's rubbing mm. ice on Chocolate's ass. Oh uh, yeah, and then he eats it. Oh. He does. Oh. It's a yeah. it's a great yeah. establishing shot. Chocolate yeah. actually gets to do more stuff in this movie too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she gets she gets some stuff to do. I, I truly wouldn't mind like a little mini series like side quest of yeah. Doc and Chocolate. That would be great. 
Uh, and Doc and Chuck. Doc even gets the to adventures do more stuff. of Doc and Chuck. Yeah, because like in the last movie, Doc is a much more mild character. He's much more tame. It's just like he's <laughs> there Doc for Miles going to have to choke a bitch. God. Oh, so he's God, that fucking line, dude. He's definitely a pimp, right? Like he's not. It's not just him. I mean, yeah. Well, uh, th- there was a point of contention on other podcasts about whether or not he is a pimp or if chocolate's just a hooker that he's hired for her services or whatever. But like he's it's definitely so wild. Yeah. It's it's it, he's he's get, he gets to do more and I I love his little demonstration of how Chev's artificial heart is working. Oh like, yeah, the little slideshow. We show. have to get all the way into the science of it for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um. What else do we want to cover? Uh. I. You know. I still think this movie, just t- in terms of like the cinematography and everything. Mm-hmm. I, you know, my before we re- started recording, Priscilla came in and said that she thinks this movie's better and it looks like it's better made. I don't Priscilla with the hot takes. I don't necessarily think so. I think this movie kind of looks about the same. I do too, but I think what happened is handheld cameras got better. They got better. So yeah, like some yeah. of that stuff looks a little clearer, a little sharper. But, I but think there's the still like is it gets to the charm of that. That's true. Movie. Like well, yeah, it's it, it's that kind of grindhouse feel that they're and, going for. And Brian Taylor said he was making not like mm-hmm. an imitation of a grindhouse movie like uh, Death Proof and Planet Terror, but he wanted to make a legit new age grindhouse movie and right I think he they fucking succeeded i mean yeah they fucking nailed it they did i don't it. think the uh i don't think the editing is as like don't stay on a shot for longer than half a second yeah, like, it's, not it's, as eccentric. Right, right. it's not as eccentric as the last there movie. are some weird choices like there's the one chase down the street and then we get a title card that says nine seconds later yeah that, <laughs> I, I like that's to think, fucking great i like to think that they needed a shot and they forgot to get it well, yeah, they, they had unused footage and they just put that in. I love because he that. leaves the he <laughs> leaves the park and then they're like back in downtown. So I think it's literally just like uh, we need mm-hmm. to cover for the fact that we're shooting in two very different areas <laughs> for sure. Right, right. <laughs> um, I also love that like he gets this little like battery pack attached to him and then immediately loses it. Like mm-hmm. you're thinking immediately destroys. Yeah, it. you're like you're thinking okay, he's got to find a way to keep this battery pack charged and then he gets ejected out of the fucking windshield. What a fucking stunt too, man. That's a like, great stunt. Whew. And then you know, of course not to be outdone. I lo- I love all the little things of how he has to charge himself with the car battery, the static mm-hmm. electricity, the static electricity being the most mundane fucking thing. Mm-hmm. It's it's the headbanging to achy breaky heart. It works so fucking well <laughs> though, yeah. Um, well, cuz Don Kim just kind of looks at him like what the fuck was that about? <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Also, um we get kind of a return of a character, but um we get the introduction of Venus in this movie, the yeah. twin brother of Kalo that has full body Tourette's. I love his introduction too. Where just, he's like, such a badass. <laughs> yeah, and then like and he's like he's explaining to him what full body full body Tourette's is. And as he's explaining it, like it's dawning on me, I'm like this guy should not, not be, be driving riding a motorcycle. A motorcycle. Yes, <laughs> I thought the same thing. I was like, this guy yeah. this is the worst person to <laughs> give a motorcycle to. Well, oh, man, that gag is rough, but it it's really it's so well funny. done in a couple yeah, of moments. It, it works in this movie somehow. The best yeah. part, there's two scenes I think it works the best at. One is when he's trying to stop Johnny Varga from coming out of the race racetrack. And, and then the nunchucks. Has, yeah. <laughs> well, that, and I think when Bai Ling starts freaking out, and then he starts having a moment too. And oh, and they had their little dance off. <laughs> 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 but even even better than that, I think the best part about this character is, you know, in any kind of a, a sequel, when you introduce a twin mm-hmm. or like a long lost brother or something, which this movie does twice, mm-hmm. it introduces his brothers. Um, you know, usually the audience will be like, oh, that's fucking bullshit or whatever. And right as it almost rivals the music sting of the refuse song from the first movie but right oh, as sure. he's like i'm venus i'm kayla's twin brother you <laughs> suck get the music my sting dick, of suck like my, my motherfucking, motherfucking dick, dick. <laughs> yeah it's almost <laughs> daring the audience to call bullshit on this whole well, idea of a also, twin brother i love when he first pulls up and like you get that like zoom in on his face you get like the old western like sure uh, mm-hmm. bird call mm-hmm. on it mm-hmm. it's so fucking <laughs> good is it am i crazy he looks great in this movie he looks, like he yes. looks fantastic yes. dude the he's got hair. his, his hair is like straightened out he's got like the, the heavy jacket. eyeliner yeah honestly i would go with majestic yes yeah no I, I he it yeah, it's great. He doesn't. I mean, he's a f- fine actor. I feel like he doesn't get to do enough of this kind of stuff, right? I like, agree. 
I would love to see even a spinoff of Venus. Like, this character mm-hmm. is fucking great. And, you know, the full body tread stuff aside, he does pull off this look so fucking well. Well, and that was, yeah. wasn't that the thing? Like, at one point, Neville Dean and Taylor were talking about doing, like, direct-to-video or direct-to-Netflix movies that were, like, mm-hmm. spinoff characters instead of, like, a full sequel. Yeah. And it just, like, never came together. Yeah. I would... Oh, that'd be wild. I would love to see this character come back. And yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Priscilla He's also great. we watched this these both of these movies together. And uh-huh. She had an interesting casting idea of if they ever I don't do like a live where this is going. <laughs> you probably won't. If they ever do a live action Xavier Renegade Angel. Oh my they god. Cast Edward Ramirez as Xavier. <laughs> I, I think could he see could it. do it. I think he could do it. That would be great. I love Venus's like deep voice. Like he mm-hmm. would get like this like <laughs> uh, the, during the last scene Venus goes uh He's like, you killed my brother, motherfucker. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how the, everything starts off, too. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. He survives, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah 100%. Okay. And Orlando survives as well? Let's talk about Orlando's uh, sweet cha- red <laughs> change <laughs> sweet in careers red also. Yeah. He looks like he would be a Ninja Turtles villain. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> He's, or like he'd be in like wesley snipes gang in yes. demolition yes. man <laughs> oh yeah oh how good is demolition man it's great mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. demolition man fucks Hell, um yes it does, it does. Let's, we've kind of talked about it here and there but why don't we go ahead and just directly address i think this movie is tenfold more racist than the first one <laughs> you know like i said cool. it, it's a lot of stuff that is more visual gags than just mm-hmm. like the straight up like it, it, there's nothing really that comes to well, Chev saying like uh, yelling Al Qaeda and stuff. But well, there is. There's you're right. Briefly, the chicken yeah. and broccoli line. Oh, is... I forgot about that line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for me, for me, it's it's Carradine's role that like See, really is di- that's difficult. Who I was saying might rival Breakfast yeah. at Tiffany's. What the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah. I. You know what? I I even looked it up too. I was like. Maybe I don't want to, you know, just go ahead and jump to this side. Maybe I'll give them some leeway. Maybe Carradine has some Asian. He ethnicity. sure doesn't. He does not. I think was, 100%. The, was the joke that he was on Kung Fu. So let's like make him look like a Fu Manchu type. It's, I don't know. It's it's, real di- bad. it's rough, man. And for uh, this to be his last role. I think it's, Kublai. yeah, it was like the last, one of the last things he shot. But like, mm-hmm. it is. And this is post Kill Bill, mm-hmm. like when he yeah. was having like a bit of a critical renaissance. Like it's so strange it's... to me. And he he goes for it too. He does. Uh, I don't He's... know if it'd be funnier if he didn't. Maybe that would have been way funnier if he didn't go for it. He's just talking in his normal voice, <laughs> and like he's just dressed up like this. Yeah, that would be his, a lot better. His name is Poon Dong. Poon Dong, <laughs> whose character is pretty ins- like that whole side quest is pretty insignificant i, feel like I forgot about him. it when it came back yeah. around to chocolate like picking him up i was like mm-hmm. what is this about again can, oh yeah i almost feel like this you make a different cut of this where you cut out that whole little extra side plot mm-hmm. and you, you can tighten up the pacing remove a scene or two you can make this movie so much better like in not- 60 minutes long <laughs> yes it would be so much quicker <laughs> But then you could do like a, the whole bloody affair and you put both movies together. You would cut both movies together into one yeah. great. One two hour, two and a half Impossibly hour. racist movie. God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know uh, Taylor mentioned they were thinking about doing something like that. Right. And that this movie is now a le- over a decade old. So. Speaking of uh, race relations in the Crank oh series, oh do you guys know oh, what, no. like, they, what they briefly considered for the plot of Crank 3? Um, what? I I think I'm. Go ahead, tell me which. I think they I wanted to this. shoot it in 3D, and it was going to be about Chev Chelios hunting down Osama bin Laden. Oh my god! No, I didn't. That's hear that. fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I did not hear about that. Yeah. Ooh, but you know what would be even better is if they somehow tied that in with that uh, Nick Cage movie. Where oh my he's gosh! Hunting Osama yeah. Bin Laden. Oh the- man. The that description, the, the quote from Brian Taylor was in like it was an interview with him that I was reading. I think it was with Consequence of Sound or something. But he was literally like, "Yeah, it was going to be about Chev hunting down Osama bin Laden, but now that got fucked up." Like he was like <laughs> mad. 
Yeah, it's it's unfortunate too because both you know Statham said he'll do it if he gets if uh, Neville Dean and Taylor get the script ready for them, and now and Amy Smart so said long. she wants to do it too. Mm-hmm. And now now that it's been so long, uh, Taylor said that the reason it hasn't happened yet is they haven't figured out a way to exceed the expectations or to like even meet them. Like right. now it would be so. It, the longer it goes without a sequel, the more st- that's at stake. Right. Know? I mean, and people. It's funny too because I was reading a Reddit thread about what people think. Oh, like what the gimmick of a crank three would be, mm-hmm. and people are like, "Well, now that he's on fire, the whole movie's got to be, you know, he's got to stay on fire." So the whole <laughs> movie is just him trying to figure out how to stay on fire the whole time. Um, and then the That'd reverse be of that, fucking rad too. No, the, because the reverse of that would be he's now that he's on fire. The, the next movie starts off with him like putting out the flames, and then he's got to he's got to stay wet, keep the putting them out. <laughs> Oh um, my god! He, that then Chev Chelios fights the Meg underwater. Oh god! <laughs> Wait, hang on. He has to stay wet the whole movie. I mean, the him the scene with the him sex and scene Amy writes Smart itself. Wrote itself. <laughs> yeah, the sex scene underwater. Yeah. Oh put it my like, god! It's shark. He's got to fight a shark. You're a squirter, aren't you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus! Christ. Well, that's that's the scene. He's in he's in shark infested waters. He's got to fight the shark, but he's he's starting to fail. And so again, Amy Smart has sex underwater, surrounded by sharks in a shark cage. There you go, boom. We just we just did it. Wow, okay. guys, I okay. can't wait to shoot no, this tomorrow. Okay. Dustin, Dustin, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. come on! They mm-hmm. would never use use a shark cage. They would in just a be in the movie. waters. Mm-hmm. They would you just be in the fucking water. Idiot. I also think it's cute that you think Jeb Chelios wouldn't just fuck a shark. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I like this dolphin. idea. It'd have to be a dolphin. Okay. Fine. Oh, yeah. he uh, he gets payback for all the dolphin rapes. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> nice. Um, unfortunately, too, um, that th- we talk about people's last roles. Mm-hmm. Um, the old lady that he rubs on—that was also Aww. her her final role too. She's so funny Aww. too. She has she's like so good. <laughs> she's got some great line, and that scene goes on so long with her just constantly swearing more and more. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if that while was the newscaster gets be... uncomfortable. I wonder if that was supposed to be like Betty White or like another cameo or something. It feels Maybe. so obvious. Yeah. yeah Dude, if- I love, uh, speaking of newscasters, at the beginning when they kind of talk about Ricky falling out of the helicopter too. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there's reports of another body following this area, but we're going to chalk that up to the bullshit that it is. <laughs> that was that really funny. He's fading out. Like as yeah. he's going to black. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Well, let's let's get to the ending then. Uh, let's talk about Ricky because what a fucking reveal! Oh, Fuck you, Chelios. <laughs> it is the best. It's one of the best things I've ever seen. It in a goes movie, full man. Futurama, dude. It's yeah. so fucking good. And I hope head in a jar. Ever, I hope if there is a Crank Three that they keep that gag going. That and he maybe... gets a mech body. Ooh. Oh my god! Or is it like a Gundam? The last time we see oh, Ricky Verona, he's his head is floating next to El Huron's body. Mm-hmm. So the next movie has to start with like both a heads being sewn onto the neck. <laughs> and so way, it's, I kind of <laughs> like this idea of a Wait, mech suit. And also their underwater ties in with the wet thing. You're right. God damn, they set it up, didn't they? Those I, I kind of like this mech suit idea because then you could top the Godzilla scene mm-hmm. of Jason Statham turning into like a fucking Gundam. Oh, it's yeah, okay. The mech okay. suit version of Ricky. It's or Honestly, like um, Crank Three is just an anime. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, or dude. even better, you do like the Power Rangers thing of like all, all the villains coming right. together to form this just fucking monstrosity of a fucking. <laughs> I'm calling it right now. Hayao Miyazaki's Crank Three. <laughs> mm, I'd watch it. I'd watch it. <laughs> Crank Three Mecha Chef. That's oh my god, that'd be amazing. Do you guys um, notice the statues have copper pubes? I, yes, yep. I, did I mean, how, how do you not notice that? There's a very clear shot. <laughs> There's a couple. There's also some of the most obvious squibs I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> yeah, like um, big patches yeah. under their shirts. We t- we talked about her briefly, but can we go back to Amy Smart just for a little bit? Just because I, I I feel like you know the character arc for her is mm-hmm. it's unfortunate because it is a downward spiral. It's almost like a. Uh, like Jesse Pinkman for to, to oh sure so it's Walt White yeah, like, a little she's bit, broken a little by bit. the end of this movie man yeah like she's such she's so dedicated to him like it, she, what a flip from her being such a naive character in the last movie mm-hmm. to being full on just a total badass and I love how like she's pretty much naked this whole movie like how committed she is to yeah 
And, but and, dude, in then in the third one though, you bring her back as almost like an anti-hero. Yeah. Mm. Dude, it could be great. I like, love the this, scene where she chucks Corey Haim into the windshield. Like that's yeah. really oh, good. So good. <laughs> so good. I like when she's getting arrested by the cops and she feels the need to spread her legs while she's standing. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Taylor's pretty much said that like anytime they wanted her character to do something in the movie, it would take about two minutes of convincing. And she'd be like, all right, fuck <laughs> it. Let's do it. Like the horse track scene. She's like, I don't want to be on in this mud rolling around and God knows what. And then like t- two minutes of being like, well, come on, we got to talk the Chinatown scene. You know, I don't, th- you know, I don't, I don't think it's like, um, you know, you hear these stories about movies like these female actresses get on set and they're expecting one thing and they're told all of a sudden you got to right. do a topless scene, you know? I think she was I, game for it. She just had to be too. sure it was going to be safe. Yeah. Yeah. I say, yeah, I highly doubt there was an intimacy coordinator on the set of this film. <laughs> right. <sighs> um, all right. Anything else we want to talk about before we get to the ending of the movie and we can recap it? Is there anything we forgot? Great gag with uh, when Venus makes the phone call and the phone number is like, a oh, thousand God, yeah. digits long it's just a good gag <laughs> yep, yep yeah and i love the great. the emt pouring fluids on the dude's intestines to keep him hydrated oh. <laughs> so d- d- the emt guys um one of the uh one of the paramedics uh the one that pretty much gets the least amount of screen time mm-hmm. is the same guy from the first movie that notices chev in front of the tv store with his heart on oh it's the same guy oh shit. Uh, that's is cool it? yeah mm-hmm. yeah i, well, I recognized the- him the other guy is uh, I can't remember his name. The yeah, he, other he's been in some stuff uh, too. Michael he Michael pops Weston. up all the time. Yeah, yeah, he's in like Garden State, uh, State of Play. He was in House MD for a while. Yeah, he, he was a he was a private investigator on House. That was like what I recognized yeah. him from. Yep, yeah, he's same. he has a very recognizable face. Yeah, man, I miss House. That was a good show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, um. Anyway, what else? What else do we do? We forget that we want to cover. Um. um Ron Jeremy's in this movie. Ron Jeremy's in this movie. He yeah. forced and his way into the movie. Yes, he forced his way Wait, into the what? movie. Wait, uh, what? That's probably <laughs> bad so? phrasing, but <laughs> so yeah. Oh. So um, Brian and Brian Taylor and the and uh, Neville Dean were like, "Well, we're gonna have this scene where porn actors are striking for better wages." Which I got to say, my favorite picket sign of that is the ATM <laughs> question mark. ATM <laughs> exclamation mark. Is the I love that. Oh my sign. god, that's so I love funny. That. I like um, no do no blow. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good too that's pretty good that's pretty good but yeah they 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 got all these uh famous porn stars um jenna hayes lexington lexington steel the powers. dropping load guy yeah. nick manning which if you don't know just just google nick manning and boy you're in for a treat dropping but, loads all over your silly wages <laughs> he ha- who also has a great line in this movie too of him pointing to Amy Smart and saying, I'm going to fuck that bitch in the back. I'm going to yep. fuck your prisoner is what he, it was so <laughs> he says that aggressive. in the outtakes. <laughs> um, but anyways, they had all these porn stars for this for this uh, actor strike. And Ron Jeremy shows up the day of filming and says, oh, I guess you guys just forgot to call me. I'm ready to, to go. Yeah, he just heard about it and was <laughs> like, I'm sure you meant to call me. Yeah. And, and Taylor said the reason they didn't call him is because they thought it'd be too obvious to have him there like too much of a obvious of a cameo so that apparently also happened with uh so my dad got to interview ron jeremy a few years ago (laughs) oh because yeah because he released like a a line of rum and so he did like this launch party in panama city beach and my dad briefly interviewed him and there's a musician that i really love uh called uh named butch walker and he had ron jeremy in a music video and apparently it was a similar situation where there was like a casting call for extras and ron jeremy just showed up and was like yeah we're gonna i'm just gonna drink and be in this music video in the background he does that like (laughs) a lot and then he was like mad that he got scenes cut from the (laughs) from the music video it's just very straight like he Hmm. he was like he was i don't know he just apparently just he likes being on camera i guess so i mean i I don't think all right I've never actually seen any of his uh, adult. I would not recommend before. it. No, I, I, can't, I can't imagine. I can't imagine it's great. <laughs> um. All right. Is there anything else we want to we want to talk about before we get Let's to talk the about this ending, bro? Let's do it. So, why don't you recap it for us, Mally? No, nah, I recapped last week. Your turn. Okay. So, uh, El Haran ends up capturing, uh, capturing which means Chevy. the ferret. 
Yes, the oh, ferret. Right. Such a, oh yeah, that oh, yeah, ferret really, with huge a balls. Silly name. Yeah, we didn't yeah. talk about the ferret with huge fucking testicles. <laughs> um, he he captures Chev, brings him to Catalina, which is apparently where his his fucking the hideout. Catalina right. fucking wine mixer. <laughs> um, and reveals that he is the third Verona brother. Um, that you know Ricky and uh, I think Alexander's the other one's name that, mm-hmm. that Chev cut the hand off of, and reveals that Ricky is alive. Uh, in head form, in this <laughs> giant fish tank with hoses hooked up into him and everything, uh, and says he's going to kill Chev in front of che- uh, in front of Ricky to get revenge. Begins whipping him like s- pretty great scene too. Like just the editing of this scene is pretty fantastic. Of uh, you know, uh, what's his name, uh, Clifton Collins Jr. just mm-hmm. going to town, and then uh, Orlando Venus and a few other people show up, and there's a huge shootout. Uh, Chev ends up booting the head of Ricky into a pool. Water. <laughs> not after, yeah, not after. Not after Ricky has some pretty great computer uh, voice. Pretty great and scene. subtitles that like glitch mm-hmm. all over the screen. It's mm-hmm. great. Um, El Haran gets shot. Um, and then Chev climbs because his heart's failing. Climbs a telephone pole and mm-hmm. grabs. Uh, a transformer by the, with both hands that so rockets badass. him, rockets him across the fucking way. And yeah. he's on fire because of the current. Uh, anyway, it's pretty much everyone of significance uh, that's on the villain side dies. I guess Orlando still is alive, right? Um, mm-hmm. Venus, I believe so. Yeah, Byling and Chev, and Chev is just overdrive now. He's on fire. He starts hallucinating. Which this is my one real critique of this ending. Okay, you bite, your, you bite your fucking tongue, sir. He's hallucinating that Byling is uh, Eve and begins having this beautiful like fantasy Keep of him loving you, <laughs> of him kissing her, and then it cuts back and because he's on fire and he's embraced by Ling, she is now on fire yep. and is just running so around like a funny. chicken with its head cut off in the back. Uh, and then Chev just gives. I don't the get finger. it. What's 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 to critique about that moment? It's I think perfect. it would be such a better reveal that he's kissing or embracing Bai Ling if you don't show her first, because it shows. Oh, her I and, see what you're saying, and uh, she she no slowly okay. realizes it. Yeah, that would be the okay. joke. Like you immediately cut after this beautiful fantasy moment, and you just see Bai Ling escaping his clutches, and she's just on fire. That's fair. That would be a, a better way to tell that joke. But anyway, it's still hilarious. And then yeah, Chev. Breaks the fourth wall and gives the finger to the audience as he is emblazed. <laughs> um, so fucking rock and cut roll, to, dude. Cut to black. This well, and, then, is, and then we get the stinger scene. Yeah. Um, where they've put Chev's heart back into him. That was... The, we forgot to mention the whole reason they're after David Carradine is because that's where Chev's heart has been put into. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So they get his heart back. They put it in. He's... Pretty much burnt to a crisp from what we see under the bandages. All bandaged up. Mm-hmm. And then we get the uh, the serial killer eyes opening at the end of the movie. <laughs> right. Uh, so, yeah. He's and still another alive, sad but... another sad moment for Eve, though, because she's like, watches him yeah. flatline. Like, fucking, yeah. like, screaming her head off and shit, crying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very so sad. So, it's, it's, it's kind of weird for this show, because, like, in the vein of Crank 1, he does live, mm-hmm. but it's... To the detriment of a lot of deaths yeah. and a lot of physical violence towards your character. Plus, it just kind of goes in line with like the we did sorry to bother you, like that kind of mm-hmm. what the fuck kind of ending. And now uh, he looks <laughs> like Dark Man, like permanently. Yeah. <laughs> the next movie would have to be him like harvesting skin from <laughs> from other gang See, members. I, dude, I don't know. I feel like if there was a Crank Three, they would like play it for laughs. Like mm-hmm. he would be burnt to a crisp. And then, like, take a shower and just wash off all the burnt bits. So, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's the Crank 3 equivalent of scraping him off the sidewalk and he's fine. Like that, yep. Or, like, the, the doc is injecting him with something that, like, rebuilds his skin, but he's yeah. got to... <laughs> Nanobots? He's gotta, yeah, he's got to keep injecting himself with something that keeps his skin from from turning back to <laughs> that's good fourth degree burns. yo dude <laughs> pl- yo hold up plot twist in three though doc is the villain mm, oh i'm into doc's, that doc's I don't, behind I don't, it all or is you, doc turned who oh, doc I fixes him up but now he's like he's trying to control Chel- chelios i yeah. want him to do something with with eve kind of like mm-hmm. uh 
do something extreme like the the girl from Planet Terror with the the, the shotgun for oh for sure a that'd be bad. Like, well, that's what I'm saying, dude. You built like she like after all this shit, she becomes like real dark, almost like an antihero. Mm-hmm. Like she gets an eye patch for no reason. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> and, like maybe her and Chevy fight for a Ooh. bit, but then they team up to take down Doc. Like you make know what it, it is? Real, I want to make it run like, together. Make it a real personal story. Here's what you do: they one of the villains, some villain, kidnaps Eve, takes her brain out. Makes her oh. into like a robot, pretty okay. much. Okay, okay. Like, gives like her enhancements, this. and then the movies he's got to get Eve's brain back. Guys, right? this is actually the plot partially of one of the Sharknado movies. <laughs> get the fuck out of here! Tara no Reid dies way. and gets turned what? into a robot. <laughs> wow, wow. What is going on in that franchise? <laughs> it, I gave yeah. up. I gave up. Uh, I well, saw one, and that was it. I mean, that's Could, fine couldn't do the after more after the first one i was like i get it that's fair <laughs> apparently think, you don't get it dude because they're doing robots true. now yeah. guys i think we could write this crank three movie though I let's think do we it could do it i'm in <laughs> um all right any anything else before we get to prop cop any of the little oh things let's go forgot? for prop cop i'm yeah. going first i, I got know, one bro i know what i, I want to have too. a feeling you're gonna take mine Mallory, yes i am let's, let's go all right here's prop cop i want verona's head <laughs> Damn it. Well, do you want the head or do you want the entire aquarium? Because that's what I put down. <laughs> I want Ricky's aquarium. All like right, all the tubes, I take the everything. head, you take the aquarium. I can do that. Because I can get I can get a different head to put in there, like a different model. Oh, like of head. you know how to fucking work it to right. keep a head alive. Right. I don't think I have to worry about being a functional aquarium. <laughs> so it's a prop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shut up. I'm gonna tell you what, I, I, what I, if you're gonna take that, I'll let you have the aquarium since it's part of it. Then I'll take Actually, you know what, Nathan? I don't want to take from you if you have the same one. What is there something you'd like? Oh, we'll movie? see. My original thought was Ricky Verona's head, but actually, <laughs> when I before we even watched the movie, I was like, "That's what I want." But uh, when I was watching it, I realized I want the little Atari joystick that Chocolate uses to play Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that's fair. That's fair. I, I want the uh, the artificial heart then the thing that's classic oh, nice. and covered in goo. Nice. That's a cool prop. Cool. It's yeah. impossibly yeah. large. I love that it's they just so kind of chuck it in there and then well, sew yeah. them back they, up. They shove it in after yeah. fucking the guy spits in there, drops well, cigarette like, ash. Yeah, like <laughs> ashes so a cigarette, spits in it, throws Johnny like an a, a pair of scissors, a pair in. of scissors into it, like. <laughs> God. Oh, Statham's reactions during that scene where he's just kind of wide-eyed staring wide-eyed. down yeah, is really mind, good. He's awake during the heart yeah, transplant. It's really good. And he doesn't decide to fight back until he finds out they're also going to take his dick. Yeah, they have no yeah. problem with him taking his heart, his lungs, his kidneys, but as soon as they want to take that dick, he's like... What about, oh, what about the scene, the weird flashback scene with Randy's old girlfriend where she says, you got a big old dick for a white boy, oh though? God. Oh, that I character. forgot about that. <laughs> I want to watch a movie a about boy. that character. <laughs> There's a ton of little spinoffs we could get for this movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, the only little bit of trivia I have before we get into Silver Lining is a dumb one. It's Amy Smart is in this movie, Crank High Voltage, mm-hmm. which is also in another movie called High Voltage, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, okay. I have no idea what that movie is right. about. But uh, let's get into Silver Linings. What you got, Dustin? Uh, he survives. Again. All right. <laughs> That's all I have. I couldn't really think of much, uh, <laughs> given given the ending of this movie. So, all right, I got one. It's for Doc. You know, mm. he's a uh, he's a disgraced surgeon, <laughs> and you know, because of Chev and all his adventures, he gets to keep performing his favorite pastime, <laughs> and that is surgery. <laughs> so, <Chev. laughs> yeah. So you know, it's good. You know, he keeps to. You know, he doesn't lose it. You know, he keeps to get to do well, his we hobby that he has. We didn't mention the reason Doc is a disgraced he, doctor. <laughs> yeah, his ex-wife's failed vaginal rejuvenation. rejuvenation right, that he I did forgot in about the that. basement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, what about you, Nathan? Is there something you can glean positive? Yeah, I mean, Venus Venus got his revenge. Ooh, he thought he thought it had been nice, stolen nice. from him. But that's, that's good. a big that's one. Good. That's good. Yeah. Um, Once again, and- proving our guests are always better at this show than we are. <laughs> <laughs> Do we think uh, Bai Ling survives? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, she's got Fucking to, right? Fucking probably. Hmm. Yeah, I, I I mean we don't really know. I guess it's ambiguous, but I would ha- I'd have to imagine. I truly I guess hope another so. Another little silver lining 
earlier oh, on shit. in the movie. Wait, dude, she come she's gotta come back and crank three as like oh, yeah. she's out yeah. for revenge on Chev now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Um that's yeah, that's yeah, your that- that's your B plot right there, bro. Oh and- my wait, her and Eve team up. Mm. Oh shit. I like Ooh. it. Ooh. They 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 can join the two. <laughs> it's oh, half split down the middle. Shit. Amy Smart on one side, Biling on the other. Oh my god, I got it. They call her Reeve. <laughs> Reeve. <laughs> Grieve. Grieve. That's what oh, you call it. Grieve. Shit. Yeah. We're, do, guys, we're doing it. Guys, we are we're writing this movie. <laughs> guys, this this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Another little silver lining though that we that happens earlier in the movie is Chev kind of rescues her from prostitution, right? Oh, like yeah. they're in that that uh oh, what's yeah, it called? I guess you're right. Yeah. Um anyways, um do you I guess we we're probably all going to recommend this movie, but would you which one would you recommend over the other? This one or the oh, original? I feel like so much of this movie depends on building off of gags from the first one that it's so hard for me I to agree. like to separate the two. Yeah. Um, I, I would definitely I I still prefer the first one, but mm-hmm. I have a newfound like rediscovery of my love for this one. Well, like how many action movies end with a gag reel? Yeah, I didn't even know about true, this gag true. reel because I never saw it before. It's so funny. Yeah. Um. What about you, Mally? Which Which would you say over one of the over the other? I mean, I kind of agree with him. Like this one's good, but you can't appreciate it if you haven't seen mm-hmm. the first one. So I kind of got to give it to the first one. Like you I really, really hope- need to see them both. Yeah. I really hope they do edit them together because it feels like that's something that both of these movies are begging for, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I, one long epic like this would be, mm-hmm. would be fantastic, yeah. Um, well, what about uh, a f- double feature of Crank High <laughs> Voltage and what we like to call here a pick-me-up movie alternative? So basically, if Crank oh. High Voltage is too much for you and you just want to come back down to happier mm. or at least more upbeat times... What's a movie you could double feature with <laughs> Crank High Voltage? I mean, um, I'm going to have to give it, I'm going to go, you know, uh, another Amy Smart film. A, mm-hmm. uh, honestly, personally, one of the best films of the 90s. And I'm going to have to give it to Varsity Blues. Mm. Ooh, okay. 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 Um, I'm going to go with a movie that actually just came out last year mm-hmm. that seems to be Interesting. growing better with age. Um, every time I see it, it gets better. I'm going mm. with a movie that Clifton Collins Jr. is in because I feel like we don't get enough of him in this ah, movie. Ah, Marriage Story. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Once Upon a Time, dot, 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 in Hollywood. Nice. Okay, nice. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he mm-hmm. is in that for that one quick scene. Mm-hmm. He has like but, well, yeah. one line of dialogue. Mm-hmm. That that movie gets gets so much better every time I see it. Yeah. Dude, it does. I've watched that movie like a few times now, and it just ke- like I enjoy it more and more each time. Like the first time I saw that movie, I kind of disliked it. Yeah, I was a little underwhelmed. And I then guess like I maybe watched I need it to watch or- it again cuz I yeah. I've only seen it one time and that was kind of my well, now my takeaway. You know, here, here's the problem with it seeing it the first time if you're a mm-hmm. Tarantino fan is you know Tarantino stick mm-hmm. so like you're you're waiting for the shoe to drop yeah like all the beats pretty yeah. much you're waiting for the the three fingers in the pub in, in Glorious Bastards right, right. Sure. you're waiting for that in this movie you don't really get it it's a right. much more restrained but that's not to say oh man three fingers in the pub really reminds me of high school <laughs> Um, it, that's not to say it doesn't have its Tarantino moments. He right. fucking mm-hmm. it is rock and roll as shit in the climax. So, yeah, like I, I will say, like I again, it it was probably not until my third time that I was like, "Fuck, this movie's kind of awesome." <laughs> I felt same thing with Hateful Eight for me when we did that episode. Like I, I didn't still too much care don't for like it. that movie. <laughs> I didn't too much care for it, but the more I rewatch it, the mm-hmm. more I appreciate it. Not because. I'm not, I don't have that weight of waiting for the expectations, you know? Right. So I actually like the Netflix cut it. of uh, uh, the Hate Plate. Oh, the miniseries? Net- yeah. I check I, that out. I actually really dug it. Um, okay. But again, it's, yeah, it's way more leisurely paced than you expect for a for a Tarantino flick. So it, I, I totally get, like, that it doesn't play for everybody. Um, yeah. For a recommendation, I I'm so stuck on... Whether I want to give something that's like uh, a 
objectively better movie or if you're already in like gonzo town if you should go just keep watching something throw, insane throw them both out throw them both okay out. if you want to watch something here. if you want to watch a crime thriller that's like way more leisurely paced and uh a lot probably a lot darker better acted um there's a movie that has actually entered my top 10 since i watched the director's cut last year for the first time uh payback starring mel gibson Mm. Oh shit, dude! I don't nice. know if I've ever cool. seen that. Okay, so I ha- I actually like that movie. Movie rules, and there's a there's a director's cut that was released on Blu-ray called Straight Up or something like that. Like it's like it's a totally different film. Like the last forty five minutes of the movie are completely different. It's a really? really it's like a hard boiled, unpleasant crime movie. Mel Gibson plays a character based off of the Parker character that Jason Statham eventually played. They weren't allowed to what? use the character's name. Yeah. Is that shit based on a book? Yes. Yeah. What? Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. So it's it's like really uh, uh, unsettling. He's But it's like the whole idea is that he was set up during a bank heist and he just wants his cut of the money and no one believes him. So he's just trying to get, he's like, I just want like my $4,000 or whatever. Like, it's like a shitty amount of money. He's like, it's the principle of it. <laughs> and everyone's just like, we got to fucking kill this guy. And he's like, if you just give me like my little cut, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> um, it's really good. And then if you want to stay in uh, complete bananas territory, uh, Drive Angry starring Nicolas Cage mm. and William Fickner is yeah. fucking rad. It's a fun Nice. Uh, All right. Well, uh. Any parting words for the Crank franchise? Anything that we forgot before we get out of here? Uh, loads we were dropped and laughs man. were had. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> loads, loads and laughs, man. Loads and laughs. Loads, loads of life's laugh about too. Yeah, we won't um, fuck for these wages. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you for hey, uh, no dough, no in. blow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for tuning in, everyone, for this uh, this experiment of Crank and Crank Two back to back. Good lord, uh, but. If these are not your sort of movies and you're wanting to get to something maybe a little more serious or maybe mm-hmm. something a little more heartfelt, we do have a bunch of other movies in our back catalog that you could check out. And, you know, we release new new movies, new episodes every every week, every Monday. Um, we were, I think we're a little over halfway through the season, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are approaching that pivotal 100th episode. Um, in, I oh, think, a, dear. I think this is episode 95 that we're oh, wow. right now. So Hell we're yeah. getting there. Um, but Nathan, thank you for joining us for these last two weeks. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. It, I, I'm, you know, when we when Miley said we got to do Crank and Crank 2, I was like, well, we have to get Nathan back because I know well, he's going to have a lot to say about those movies. Well, and so I didn't know Mally picked it. And so when Dustin texted me, do you want to do the Crank movies with us? I said, Mally's going to be sure that I don't like good movies. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and There's a potential you might come back. I think we discussed for one more episode this season. Just yeah, hopefully. Fingers we'll, crossed. We'll, we'll see how that works out if the schedules yeah. line up and everything. But thank you again. You've been you were a fantastic guest on these. Two Thanks, episodes. guys. Um, so thank you for listening, everyone. Again, new episodes every Monday. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, leave us uh, a rating and some feedback, and we'd really appreciate that. You know, we're on uh, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you can get podcasts. For the most part, we're there. Uh, if you want to get more uh, updates from us, you can check out our social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search for the Silver Linings Playlist and you'll find us. Uh, and we're also on Reddit at r slash Silver Linings Playlist. Uh, it's just an overabundance of information about mm-hmm. the show you can get there. Um, so, clue for next week. Um, this is a movie I had not seen before uh, until it was recommended for the show. Uh, but all I'm going to say is when they're dead, they're just hookers. Oh, okay. So, a very Chev Chelios thing to say. <laughs> uh, we'll find Jesus. out what that means. And no, it's not an entire episode of Archer. Uh, <laughs> we'll find out what that means next week. Uh, so tune in then. And as wow. always, Excelsior. you are my shiny lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Excelsior! 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 Look at us!